Sunday and we have had so much fun with this one. So we've got Puss in Boots for you and don't forget the juniors also have got Donkey. I think everybody's going to have a go at both of them but let's get going with Puss. do my pus in my um in my sketchbook and it's a watercolor sketchbook you can see all the things we've done it in the past the buzz and the so it, i can do it using my watercolor pencils in here and my paintbrush and it won't mark because this sketchbook actually you can do both sides so i've got donkey up here at the top and i'm going to come in i'm going to put pus here and he's going to take up the whole of my page here so when you're looking at this and you're thinking about the shapes I've been doing this for so long now, I'm really seeing those shapes in here. And your temptation might be to go for a circle and a circle, but actually, because Puss has the, is very sort of live and long, it's not. What we're going to do is we're going to start with squares. So let me come in here, and I'm, as always, going to put, put a little mark in for myself just to show myself where halfway up the page is. That will really help me. And then I'm going to start with a line, pretty much. Every design starts with a little line or a curve. So if I put that line in there, and then I'm gonna mark up a rectangle like that. It's more a square really, to be honest. It's just a little bit higher than it is wide. So that's my starting two small lines coming in from there. And then we're gonna put in this curve here. So it's, um. We've got a sort of ovaly shape, egg shape there, which will form the main part of his face. So we've got that there. And then taking up here, don't think about what you should, you feel like you should draw for a hat. Just go with it and pop in these shapes here. So it's quite high this, because it's also gonna be the top of his face. So we go for that there. So we've got that shape in. Okay, so we've got there, we've got those three key shapes joined by two lines. Now, coming down here, because he's got his swagger, he has got some swagger, has that cat, hasn't he? Coming down a line there, and it's a straight line down here, and then join that across. And then here, I just want you to curve it slightly round, and a straight line here, and across. And then to finish it off, in the middle of this line, you've got one line there and then one line down. These are going to form his boots. And you've got a longer line there and then coming down. So think about that shape in between. There, that's the shape you're looking for. So first shape's on. If you press pause now, think about the size of each shape in relation to each other and the position of each shape. From this basic shape, let's concentrate on these two first. And what I'm going to do is take it up here slightly and across and down here. Now, when you come to the pause, these bits here that you've put in are all going to be in red, like a red dashed line. So you'll be able to see really clearly, but it really helps us as we're working this out. So that bit down there, I'm just going to soften it up. So it becomes it's the neck and the same around here soft just softened up slightly and that's nothing much to change on that at all i am going to rub that line out so we can start to see the face taking shape really quickly so let's put this hat shape in now what i'm going to do is cut off at a jaunty angle that bit so we've got the top and then we're going to take it round like that and here I want to come down to about there in a curve. And that's the brim of the hat there. Coming up and round in a curve. And here, we've got that. I'm going to take it right out to here and round. So that's the hat in place now, the basic shapes of the hat. And you could be able to come in and out and rub those bits out as well. So can you see, very quickly, the cat is beginning to arrive. Now, let's think about negative shapes. So negative shapes are the shapes within the shapes. So I'll bring in the guide sheet here. This is the one you're gonna see when we pause. I wanna show you two shapes here. That one there, can you see? And that one there. These shapes are really important. Let's get this one in first. So we're coming round here like that. 
and that's the shape we're looking for. And here, towards the bottom of the square, coming up and going around there in a shape. Right, the rest is going to be simple now because now we can just pop in his arms and the arms are going to come up round there like that. Take it out. We're going to come down to there and it's just a sort of wobbly line to join it down. So there's one hand on the hip just from getting that shape in. Now on this one, he's got his paw up to his mouth. I'm going to take that round, take it out there, and again, that's going to come up like that. So you can see how thinking about the negative shapes, getting those shapes in, it just changes it straight away. So suddenly from our shapes, he's starting to appear. We don't need to do very much here at all. We're just changing slightly a couple of really very little on those bits. So let's get his boots in now. We've got the bottom of his boot here. So that's just going to come in. And I just want you to look at the lines around. Think about the negative shapes. Think we've got that shape in already. And from there, we put in the heel of the boot and then the boot coming down and the shape round. There's one boot, how easy was that? And then coming down to there, so down from that line, I want you to take it right up to there. And that is the boot coming round there. So, so much of the work went into those early shapes, which weren't difficult. It was just squares touching onto triangles. And that's what drawing is. It's getting the shapes in and thinking about that, thinking about the size, and then the details just come at the end. So if you pause now, any of these lines which are done in red, you can then, once you've got to this stage, you can rub them out and then we'll come back on and we'll finish the last few shapes. Now it's the fun bit. Let's finish this off with his little details here. He has got the cutest little tiny nose there. And for the eyes, we're going to put two lines. One, two, and then the, it's going to be the curve that comes up. They're going to form them into his little eyes like that. And an iris and a big pupil. I almost did the, the, the one, you know, where he's a kitten and he's and he looks up and he's got his sort of little pleading hands. I, I was so close to doing that, but I just love this picture so much. So I'm going to take it round a couple of broken lines for eyebrows. And from here, it's just a little, two little curves round. One, two, and just give yourself a tiny V underneath there and take down and a line and a couple of lines coming out for whiskers. And that's his face done. You've already got the hat in, but if you just very lightly, because we're going to do this with paint, put in a little shape that will form the feather from his hat. All you need on his, to finish off his claw is a couple of curves around there and a little line. And then he's got this neckerchief, which we've been trying to find out what the little sign is, but we haven't found it out yet. Um, maybe you can find it out for me and let me know. So we come in and we've got the little neckerchief. His arms are all done, but he does need his cape. So, it, oh, it's the top of his cape, isn't it? That's what it is, I've just realized. We're gonna take that out in a sort of triangle shape there and then add another triangle on top for that bit of the cape. And don't forget his tail. So it's coming out here, curling round. We've got his tail sort of coming out from his boots there. And then the sword. So all you're doing is thinking, again, just think about the shapes. So we've got a circle, we've got a triangle, and then we've got the sword. I'm going to put that so it's more like that. So the sword can come out at an angle there. And then we've got that shape coming up from it. Then his belt, pretty much done now. So his belt starts up here. We've got that those two lines then the buckle, and then that shape of the lines there. And that is the end of our drawing. I am gonna paint, oh no, we've got a couple of little lines here in the top of the boots. And then I'm pretty sure that's it, yeah. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna do this in watercolor pencil, so stick with me. Even if you don't have the watercolor pencils, um, have a look at the colors that I'm gonna use. And um, let's get him painted. <laughs> use 
use three colours to do his, get his fur in here. I'm going to use an orange, a burnt sienna, which is an orangey brown, and a really bright yellow. And with the yellow, I might as well start up here, actually. With the yellow, I'll start on the feather. And I'm just going to go down like that to put the feather in. And then I'm going to take my brush, tiny bit of water, wet it. Oh, dear. Always clean your brush. <gasps> that was a bad start, wasn't it? So I'll try and get that up by lifting it off. It's never a total disaster. There we get, and then I'll just smooth out my paint there. I'll pretend that was intentional as a lesson in brush cleaning. Now, what I'm going to do is put a little bit of yellow, hardly any, here, just down the centre of his tummy and on his face, hot, in that little heart shape, but hardly any at all. And then I'm going to come round and I'm going to put in quite a bit of the orange. Now, with the watercolour pencils, it's how dark this paint is, is going to depend on how much paint you put on. There are some areas where I want quite a lot, so I want it to be darker here and lighter in other areas. And also, I'm going to put a bit of the burnt sienna on, on the bits where I want it to be really dark. So just a little bit. You can see if Elizabeth goes right in, can you see? That's really, this will get me the results I want. And then coming in here, I'll go for a bit, a lot more as I'm coming around, but I'm not going to do much on his hands at all. I'm going to actually leave them pretty much. And as I go around the edges of him, I'll just pop that in there. And if I want a bit that I think is going to be darker, again, I'm going to go back in with that burnt sienna there. I'm going to do that all around the edges here. So when you try to, when you, when you want um, to mix a paint colour with these, just think, Think about, you, you can't really layer it in the same way as you would with watercolour washes. So you're putting all the colours down first. So there's me putting these colours down before I start doing it. And I'm going to go in here. This is the last bit really, apart from his tail. So I'll get my orange in. But here I want it to be much darker around here, around like in the creases of his legs. So can you see how hard I've gone there? I'm going to go a little bit harder around there. So now, apart from his tail, which I'm going to do there like that. And I'm going to put the stripes in with the, like that. And then I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to, this time I am going to actually make sure it's definitely 100% clean it is now and I'm just going to turn this into paint now if I go from the orange into the yellow then it's going to immediately go orange but if I turn the yellow first like that then I take the orange in can you see and that's the effect I want I want this it going dark around the edges and nice and pale so but you can get some really subtle effects with these watercolor pencils they are just amazing on lots of levels as well as neatness which is important and with his hand I'm going to wet my brush so there's no paint on there we go put some water in and then just push it up so it's really pale so I get that kind of peachy look and I'm going to do the same here turn that bit first and then I'll turn this and I want to get remember we talked about the marks that we wanted let's go round and as soon as you've turned one bit, it is going to go darker. So rather than, I, I want the edges to look like fur. So there we go, apart from around the top of the cape there. And then I put a bit, little bit of water on my brush so that I can soften that edge there. You can see. And then very quickly, I'm just going to do this really quickly now to show you. I'll turn this bit, this arm here, and you can see where I've put the burnt sienna, you've got it where it's much browner. Coming to here, so because to avoid having a really sharp line, wet brush, no paint on, and I'm just letting it merge together like that. 
Same around here. Now this is much darker here. And I still want to kind of keep those lines there. So we'll do that here. Clean my brush before I go in the light ones. There we go. And then I'll just bring all that in. And with the tail, I'm just going to go like that. Turn it. There. So I'm going to leave that to dry now for a few minutes and then I'm going to come back and finish it. I'm going to finish it off now just using three colours here. Um, I'm, I'm going to start with the red and I'm just going to put in a touch at the top of his hat and here on that bit. And then a little bit coming around there in the back of the cape. And we've got two lines here in, the, um, in his boots. Boots are obviously critical. We've put some boots. And then we've got all this um, black here on the hat. And there. I'm just gonna really loosely color that in there and then I'll change it to paint. So if I put, the more water I put on, the um, lighter this will become and I want it to be quite dark. So I'm making sure my brush is quite dry. And with the red, I don't want it to be a stripe. I want it to be, can you see? So it's sort of very subtle. That's the black in the hat. Now, coming down from here with the eyes, I'm going to go like that. And, and then I'm going to use the brown. Just putting a little iris around. The nose is actually, I'm just going to do it in brown here. And come down and then let's give him some whiskers. Coming round, I'll just go like that. And then we've got his amazing cloak. I'll go around there. And here. And here. Let's turn that now. Again, see I'm just squeezing that paintbrush out so that it stays nice and dark. And there's a turn that bit there. So we've got that bit of red as well. So if I come down here now, I'm just gonna pop in his belt. I have said to Elizabeth, this has been my favourite one to do so far, and it has. It's just because I really love the Shrek films. And this is probably... Donkey and this one are my favourite characters. And just turn that a bit more. And I've got a little bit here. Let's see. So I'm going to use the black quite subtly here. I'm just going to take it down there and round because I want it to be that bit to be more greyish inside. So if I turn, quickly turn the belt like that, clean my brush between because the pigment will be on the brush, you see. That'll make it a sort of grey and there I want it paler grey like that inside. All I've got to do now to finish him off, I will go back in and play because I want these bit lines to be much stronger around here. But all I've got to do to put him, finish him off now is his amazing boots. And don't forget, the juniors did a donkey using watercolours from the palette. So maybe... If you get a bit of spare time this weekend, you might want to have a go at that as well. If it's hard to pick characters, I did have lots of looks, a look at loads of different ones, but it's just that Puss in Boots seemed on Donkey, with Shrek really, and Fiona. They're such big characters. Though the gingerbread man was tempting because he always makes me laugh. Here we go, let's change that there. And then that 
is pretty much it for our Puss in Boots. So make sure you send us yours, tell us how you did them and how you found it. And we hope you've really enjoyed it. Hope you really enjoyed that. Hope over the weekend you also have a go at Donkey. And don't forget there are now about 80 uh, daily draw art lessons in our YouTube channel that we started um, at lockdown. So there are loads for you to do to choose from. Go and have a look back. We've got unicorns, R2D2s, Mario's toads. I can't even start to go through to name how many there are. So have a little look over the weekend, see if there's any you've missed and have a go at them. We are going to be back on Monday and we've been getting requests from lots of you. Keep the requests rolling in. One of the requests we've had quite a lot is a sloth and that's what we're going to be doing on Monday. So we will see you then. Mm -hmm.